Hello everyone, welcome to The Old Man and the Reed. My name is Jerry. Uh, today I'm going to discuss the books I read in the month of June. I read quite a few books uh, and just really some exceptionally good ones in that uh, in that bunch. So the first book I'll show you is uh, An African in Greenland. But this was written by Tete Michel Kapamasi uh, and it's a memoir he wrote in 1981. Uh, now this book I actually discovered uh, from watching um, a booktuber Mike Reads the World. Uh, in my opinion the best booktube channel on YouTube. Uh, he finds some fascinating books from around the world and he really knows how to talk about them. So anyway this is uh, a memoir and it uh, follows Tete Michel. Uh, he was born in Togo uh, to a a traditional African family. Um, his father had eight wives and uh, just numerous children, uh, but uh, Tete Michel was injured in an accident uh, when he was climbing a tree and attacked by a snake. Uh, he fell from the tree and was uh, fairly seriously injured. Uh, he was taken by his father to a sneak or a snake priestess uh, to for treatment, uh, for traditional treatment, and uh, uh, so she treated uh, him for his injuries. But uh, in payment for the treatment, uh, uh, Tete Michel was required to then go live with her at the snake cult. But as he was. Uh, uh, recovering he read a book on Greenland and he decided he wanted to go there. He knew he didn't want to go to the snake cult so he ran away. Uh, he spent the next 12 years traveling through Africa and Europe meeting all kinds of people but then after 12 years he was eventually able to make his way to Greenland. Uh, and there he just recounts his uh, travels through through Greenland, just the numerous people he met and befriended and lived with, uh, mostly Inuit or Eskimos. And uh, he was uh, basically adapting to the lifestyle of, uh, of the people he was staying with. Uh, just really a fascinating story. The next book I read is Little Misery by Francois Marriac, uh, published in 2020. And uh, this follows a young boy named Galol. Uh, he lives in a family of gentry in uh, France. And he lives with his grandmother. She's a baroness, uh, his weak father and his very mean-spirited and domineering uh, mother. Uh, he is repeatedly uh, rejected by his mother and he gets a lot of verbal abuse from her. Uh, it's really a sad, depressing story with a really tragic ending. Uh, the next book I have is Losing Nelson by Barry Unsworth, published in 1999. And uh, this follows a man, Charles Cleesby. Uh, he's uh, obsessed with Horatio Nelson. Uh, his entire existence seems to be devoted to the memory of Nelson. But uh, one, is, one of his favorite pastimes is just to reenact some of the battles that Nelson was in on a table he had using uh, models that he's collected over the years. But he's writing a book about Nelson and he hires a woman uh, named, that he calls Miss Lily, and she uh, transcribes and types uh, for him. But uh, over a period of time, she starts questioning the greatness of Nelson and uh, uh, Cleesby's obsession with him. <clears throat> uh, 
the next book I have is Prussian Nights by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, published in 1974. And this is a book-length uh, poem by Solzhenitsyn, and it's uh, about the uh, uh, conduct of the Russians as they advanced on the Germans uh, in during World War II. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of it is based on Solzhenitsyn's own experiences. But he uh, describes the very graphic uh, violence that the Russians had against the Germans and he, although he doesn't get graphic in his description, he really uh, leaves no doubt about the rape and murder that was taking place. Uh, the next book I read was The Woman in the Dunes, published in 1962 by Kobo uh, Abe. And this is about a man who uh, collects insects and he's gone to the dunes to look for insects. He misses the bus back home and so he has to stay in the village at the dunes. But uh, all of the houses in the village are surrounded by huge uh, steep sand dunes and in order to get to them uh, he, you have to use uh, a rope ladder. So the house that he is going to stay in with a woman who's agreed to take him in, he goes down a rope ladder. The next day though when he goes out to leave uh, the rope ladder is gone and he discovers that he's now a prisoner in the, the house. He can't escape because of the steep uh, sand dunes and uh, he has to assist her in her daily activities of clearing the sand that has fallen into the pit. And uh, so he uh, um, is, a, uh, is a prisoner. The next book I have uh, pu published in 2019 uh, is The Man in the Red Coat by Julian Barnes. And uh, this is a fictional biography of a man named Samuel Posey. Um, Posey had actually been the subject of a portrait painted by uh, John Singer Sargent. And in that portrait, he's wearing a long red coat. Uh, so that's where the title of the book came from. But uh, Posey is a renowned uh, physician uh, and uh, is a gynecologist. But he's a man who seems to have a real obsession uh, with sex and he has numerous affairs with uh, his patients. Uh, it's, uh, the story just uh, recounts uh, all of the uh, interactions he had, uh, much of it with very famous people of the period, uh, including Oscar Wilde and Sarah Bernhardt. Uh, and it also was a bit of a discussion about French society that during this period there was uh, an enormous number of shootings going on, not just in duels, but also attempted murders. The next book I have is uh, Rashomon and Other Stories, just an exceptional short story collection by Takashi Kojibe, Kojima. Uh, this was published in 1915. Uh, but the st of the stories, uh, title one is Rashomon, and this is about a servant uh, uh, who has been let go by his master, and after he is left, he sees an old woman who is pulling hair out of the heads of dead people. Uh, another story, or the next story in the book is Yam Gruel, and this is about a, a man named Goy. He's a lowly fifth uh, ranked samurai 
who has an obsession with yam gruel, but it's something he rarely gets and is only able to eat a little bit. And he mentions this at a dinner he's at, and a powerful samurai overhears the story, and so that samurai uh, invites him to come to his estate to eat all of the yam gruel he can eat. Uh, the next story is The Martyr, and uh, this is about a young boy who is left at the door of the church of Santa Lucia, and he's taken in by the Jesuits. Uh, he grows up there and it is loved by all, but uh, after he's fairly grown, he commits a transgression and is rejected by uh, everyone. Uh, the next story is Kessa and Morito, uh, and uh, this is about a man who has uh, sexual relations with a married woman, but then he decides that in order to protect her honor, he is going to have to murder her husband. And the last story in, that I'll mention in the book is The Dragon, and this is about a priest who uh, puts up a sign as a hoax uh, that says that a dragon will rise from a pond on a certain day. Uh, the next book I have is The Pioneers. Uh, this is a history book by David McCullough, published in 2019. And, and this is a a history of the establishment of the Ohio Territory. Um, the first part of the book follows uh, basically two men, uh, Manasseh Cutler and Rufus Putnam. Uh, Cutler had been instrumental in setting up and forming the Northwest Ordinance that created the territory. Uh, and after uh, the U.S. had taken possession from the British, and then Rufus uh, Putnam uh, was the leader of the first pioneers into the territory, and it recounts their struggles, uh, just really some dire situations, both uh, in getting uh, the uh, land prepared and their uh, dealings with the native people or Indians. Uh, the second part of the story uh, then follows Ephraim uh, uh, Cutler, and uh, it's basically about the development of the cities and towns uh, of the in the territory. <clears throat> uh, the next book I have is Children of the Holocaust by Ernest Lustig. Uh, this was published in 1995, and this is a book that combines two short story collections and uh, a, a novella, but uh, uh, I had already read uh, two of the, uh, uh, or one of the short stories and the novella. I had read uh, the short story collection Night and Hope and the novella Darkness uh, Cast No Shadow. But uh, the other short story collection titled Diamonds of the Night is one I hadn't read yet. And a couple of the st uh, stories in the book, uh, I'll mention uh, The Lemon is about a, and I should mention, uh, Ernest Lustig's, all of his writings were about the Holocaust and the, the extreme suffering that the people uh, in the Holocaust are in the ghettos uh, endured. But The Lemon is about a man who takes uh, the pants of his father who has just died to trade for food. Uh, now when he trades the, the pants for food, then he's told that uh, if he got his father's gold, he could uh, trade that. Uh, the second uh, is uh, the second round, and uh, this is about a, a man who basically steals a loaf of bread from a train and uh, has a gun pointed to his head by the guard. And the last story I'll mention is The Old Ones and Death. And this is about a, a uh, about the last thoughts of an old woman as she's dying 
and the uh, apparent uh, uh, indifference of her husband. Okay, the next book I have is really a tough one to talk about. This is The Obscene Bird of Night by Jose Donoso, published in 1970. And, it, you know, it's really, it's a incredibly well-written book, but just very difficult to follow. Uh, it, uh, uh, there's just lots of twists uh, and it meanders and uh, goes into numerous asides and uh, some of them are contradictions of things that were already told and it's talked from or told from many perspectives. Uh, but the beginning of the book is that a couple of centuries ago uh, there was a wealthy landowner uh, and he has a daughter who is possessed with supernatural powers. Uh, he has a convent built and then confines that daughter to the convent. Uh, and uh, over the years, the convent becomes a rundown uh, religious institution that houses orphans and elderly women. But uh, then the story gets to the main then book gets to the main story. And uh, this is a part that's narrated by a man named Humberto Penaloza. Uh, and he's the secretary of one of the descendants of the original uh, landowner. And uh, this man's name is Geronimo de Azcotea. Uh, and uh, Geronimo has a son that is born deformed. Uh, the boy is confined to a place, an estate called La Riconada, and uh, this is a place that's for people with physical deformities. And he's placed there so that he won't know that he's actually deformed uh, and uh, will live in, you know, ignorant of the fact and he's put under the care of uh, Humberto. Uh, and as far as I can tell, that's basically the core of the story. But there's so many twists and uh, side stories and just go off into so many different directions that it's really kind of difficult to really pinpoint exactly <laughs> what the core story was about. But uh, anyway, it, it's just a book full of contradictions. Uh, the book, next book I read is You Have Seen Their Faces, uh, published in 1975, uh, written by Erskine Caldwell. And basically it's a story where Erskine Caldwell uh, teamed up with this marvelous uh, photographer, uh, Margaret Bork White. She's someone I actually have a couple of books of her photographs in my collection. And uh, the two of them traveled the South during the Depression and uh, in order to uh, document the lives of the extremely poor people that uh, lived there and lived in the South. And Caldwell explains uh, one of the reasons for the just very dire poverty that the people lived in is that it began with the plantation system. The plantations were uh, only growing cotton and the South had very poor soil to begin with and so the soil became over the years very depleted and very unproductive and eventually the, the plantation owners uh, gave up on their plantations. They took their money and uh, moved to the city and rented out the plantations to uh, the workers of the area because the workers still needed jobs and needed an income. And so they would rent the uh, plots out uh, and uh, this became the known as the sharecropper system. Uh, the uh, workers would pay rent and then would have to give up to about a half of their crop to the landowner. 
and uh, the landowners discovered that this system was much more lucrative for them. They made a lot more money than actually growing the uh, crops themselves. Uh, and he also talked about how this system uh, eventually led to even more racism in the South because the property owners discovered that they could actually intimidate intimidate the uh, black uh, grow or um, workers easier because uh, they had no recourse had no uh, legal uh, remedies for any of the uh, injustices done to them and so uh, the uh, landowners property owners began uh, letting the white sharecroppers go and only renting to blacks and this increased the racism in the south and the last book i'll talk about that i read in uh, june is in dubious battle by john uh, steinbeck published in 1936 and this follows a man jim nolan uh, and he's unsatisfied with his life and uh, is wants to do something different and becomes a member of the party it's never actually mentioned what the party is but it's pretty obvious it's the communist party but he meets a man named mac and mac is an organizer uh, a party organizer and the two of them go to uh, an apple orchard region to organize the workers to strike against the property owners uh, for higher wages. Uh, they, uh, they actually talk one of the uh, landowners to allow the strikers to camp on the property, uh, but this eventually leads to disaster for everybody. Uh, there's a lot of violence that develops from the growers with the assistance of law enforcement against the strikers and then there's a a lot of violence the strikers use in retaliation uh, and it's really just a disaster for everybody involved uh, so those are the books i read in the month of june uh, just some really exceptional ones and uh, a, a little bit of a variety so I want to thank you for watching the video and hopefully you'll watch another. Thanks.